Howdy folks, John here. The wifey just stuck her head through the garage door to say the house is getting cold and the heat pump's making a funny noise. So in today's DIY repair video, we'll be identifying, fault tracing, purchasing and replacing a faulty heat pump start capacitor. And I should point out the same steps would also be used on an air conditioner condenser unit. Let's get started. Well, so here's the rig right here. And yes, it is kind of making a funny noise. Just the compressor is running. The coil fan isn't. So this could be a bad fan motor. This could be a bad relay, it could be a bad control board. But the first thing to usually check on these is the start capacitor. They're known to fail and it's pretty much the first thing and easiest thing to check. Also the least expensive to replace. So one thing you can try to see if it might be a bad cap is to manually spin the fan to get it started because the capacitor is used to start the fan. And if you can get it to run by manually turning it, that's a pretty good telltale sign that it's the cap. So give it a spin with something safe, don't use your finger. There we go, it's coming up to speed. Beautiful. So I think it's a bad cap, let's have a look. Safety first, power down the disconnect or the circuit breaker. Next we will remove the electrical panel. Now this may look like it's still powered up, but this is just getting low voltage from the control board inside the furnace or air handling unit, whatever you want to call it. But if you want to be sure that there's no high voltage going on here, get out your trusty multimeter and probe the two hots coming in. So the red and the black. Make sure it's in the AC scale. No voltage there. So we know it's powered down. So here's our capacitor. This is known as a dual run because it's uh, controlling both the start of the uh, compressor and the fan. It looks physically fine. Sometimes when these go the cap will be really bulged, but if everything's looking fine, oh, it's greasy. I don't know, it might be leaking its inner schmoo out. So that's kind of suspect, but uh, let's get this thing out. Now these things often have a bunch of wires coming out of them. So you may want to take a photo if uh, you don't know what's going on. There's not too much going on on this one. There's a yellow here and a blue here and a brown at the back. Before working on the capacitor, I like to play it safe. Any high voltage capacitor, I like to uh, make sure there's no voltage potential at the terminals that could be stored in there. So I've just got an alligator clip hooked up to an insulated screwdriver and the other end of the alligator clip is on the grounding post of the machine and I'm just gonna touch all these terminals just to remove any voltage potential. Now that that's safe, we can pull off the tab connectors here. So we've got one yellow, two blues, and there's a brown at the back. Well, it's that simple to get it out. So we have a pretty good idea that this capacitor is shot because we were able to get the fan to uh, spool up by spinning it manually. Now, of course, that may not always be the case. And of course, if it's the compressor side of the capacitor that's shot, you can't uh, just spin the compressor up by hand. So you have to test it. These terminals are actually marked. There's going to be a C terminal. That stands for common. There's going to be a HERM terminal which stands for hermetically sealed. And of course, the fan terminal. Now you can get these in uh, oval run capacitors, which have just got two outlets on them. So it's just a single uh, motor start capacitor because not all AC compressors or heat pumps will need a dual start capacitor. You know, if you've got an ECM motor, for example, on the fan, you know, you only need the capacitor to start the uh, compressor. But regardless, you would test it the same way. For this first test method, you're going to need a digital multimeter. You're going to want to put it into the ohm scale. 
This is the common pin here, herm pin and fan pin. So we know the herm and the common were working because the compressor was working. But when you probe this, what we're going to be doing is charging the side of the capacitor up in the ohm scale with the multimeter and you'll get infinite resistance to some conductivity and then it will drop back down to infinite. So we'll probe it here. So you saw we had some continuity there and then it dropped to zero. Swap the leads around. Okay, so we know that's working. Now if we do the same thing with the common and the fan, we know the fan side is not working. Doesn't matter, we just have infinite resistance. So nothing's charging up. Now you can also do this with an analog meter. Same idea, so here's the common and the herm terminal. See it jump and then it slowly goes down to infinite resistance again. But if we do it on the fan, common to fan, common to fan, nothing. Oh, and another test I should have pointed out with the digital one, you can also check if there's a short between any of these and the case. So you just probe all of these and you should be getting infinite resistance. Now the third and perhaps the best test is if your digital multimeter supports this function is to actually check the capacitance. Now on your capacitor you should have two, two numbers if it's a dual run. The first number is the Herm capacitance and the second number is the fan. So we've got 70 microfarads and 7.5. So when we probe between the common and the Herm we should get around 70 microfarads. 68.1 so that's looking not bad. And now if we go from the common to the fan, <laughs> it's only giving us about 0 0.07 nanofarads. So completely shot. Confirmed it's garbage. Let's get a new one. So let's see what old Amazon's got. Probably the best pricing and the quickest shipping to here in the remote wilderness. So I'm just going to use the part number, 27L556. And looks like we've got something here. GE Gentech, 77.5 microfarads, 370 volt. That's the beast, not too expensive either. Now the other option, if you don't have the part number for your capacitor, is to actually put in the specifications, specifically the microfarads and the voltage. And we'll do a search here. And as you see, more options are coming up, more aftermarket options. So if you don't want to pay a little bit more for the factory OE one. You can get aftermarket ones for a few bucks less. I've heard these are hit and miss though. Uh, any HVAC techs out there, what are your thoughts on aftermarket capacitors? I've heard they can save you a lot of money, but I also heard they can fail a lot quicker. So I'm going to stick with the original one. We'll order it up. Four to six days later. Well, that arrives surprisingly quickly out to the uh, middle of nowhere here. So when you get your new capacitor, obviously you want to make sure it's the right one. So physically they look the same. Let's just take a peek at the values now to confirm those are the same. So we've got the same part number. Now if you get an aftermarket or non-OEM, main thing you want to make sure of are the specifications are the same. So we've got 70 microfarad and 7.5. So that's on the mark. We've got a plus minus 6% tolerance rated at 370 volts AC, so that's good. And we've got an available fault current of 10,000, same as the original. And if you want to be really cautious, you can test the values just to make sure they're right. You don't have to do this, but uh, might be interesting for the video. So we'll put our meter in the capacitance scale. So we are at 70.9 microfarads from common to herm, so that's perfect. And the fan, that was our bad one. We are at 7.69. So that checks out good too. I just want to make it a little bit easier for myself because this is facing down, as you know, so I'm not going to be able to see the terminals. So the C was the yellow. The Herm, 
hermetically sealed compressor was blue. Of course, the fan was on the back, we couldn't see it. So I just wanted to mark that, just make it a little bit easier for uh, installation orientation. Installation is just in the reverse order of taking it out. And now we'll fit our yellow back on and our two blues. That's it. Turn the disconnect back on or circuit breaker. One caution I should mention, if you are working on a heat pump, this wouldn't apply to air conditioning, but if you've got a heat pump unit, there may be a crankcase heater on the compressor. This one's got one. It's not that cold out right now, but I'm going to leave it turned on before activating it just to allow that crankcase heater to heat the crankcase oil up a bit in the compressor. It's just better for the compressor, right? Okay, it's been about half an hour. Turn up the heat, Sandy. Two very boring minutes later. Oh ho, we're back in business, folks. That did her. Excellent. So folks, hopefully that helps you identify fault trace and replace a faulty uh, air conditioner or heat pump capacitor. As you can see, it's not that difficult and it will likely save you a few hundred bucks in a service call. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy capacitor replacement.